So in my last video I was talking about blue collar people and people who are working with their hands and getting stuff dirty and doing the dirty work and I was wearing my Mr. Rogers <laughs> sweater. And now I'm talking about an old Hollywood hot Oscar nominee movie and I'm completely just gross. I spent the past two and a half hours unsuccessfully trying to move a tractor out of the mud and yeah, so that would've been better for last week. Oh well, really subverting expectations here. You know what else subverted expectations? This movie. Seriously, thought it was gonna be garbage. It's not. <laughs> So welcome back to another episode of Why Don't You Love, and this movie is still in theaters, so go catch it now. I was totally ready to make a video on why this was an overrated piece of garbage, why it was Oscar bait, and why it's just the worst thing ever. I'm This channel is built on the premise of loving movies and wanting to talk about the positive aspect of movies, but I was ready to start the hate train. I was so sick of hearing about La La Land from everyone. It's just, it's, it was getting ridiculous, and there's no way that I could like this movie. It's very clearly trying to appeal to the Hollywood voters voters for Oscar season, and it's very, it's a musical. I hate musicals. There are some exceptions. I think there are some story, like most of the Disney movies, I think that that's a good example. But musicals that I like are far and few between, so I was just, I was full speed ahead on the hate train going into this movie. I was completely caught off guard by the fact that La La Land was good. Great, even. Like, possibly the best movie of the year. I don't know how it happened, but somewhere around the second or third act, I'm like, yeah, this is... This deserves to win all the Oscars. <laughs> Last week I talked about how Deepwater Horizon deserves so many Oscars for like the mood that, for bringing us into the mood and for respectfully and tastefully showing these events. But if La La Land just sweeps everything, you know, I'm, I'd, I'd be fine with that. <laughs> it's been a while since a movie has come out that hit that sweet spot between like, oh, that's gonna win a bunch of Oscars and oh, that's actually a good movie. <laughs> the La La Land is a musical that is set in modern day LA. It's done in the style of like old school Hollywood. There's even a tap dancing scene <laughs> in, in this movie, which that's just a staple of old Hollywood where when I saw it, I just immediately rolled my eyes and thought like, oh, here we go. This is it's going downhill from here. But it's just, this movie has just a very great way of presenting, like authentically presenting ideas and passion passions and lovable characters and then also just hitting him with like the good old-fashioned LA cynicism. <laughs> what can I say? It's rough down here in Southern California. Everybody's a little cynical. The opening number is, in, is like stuck in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic. Like that's just, that's perfect. And I, I don't want to spoil too much of the movie, but I loved that like, I'm sorry, minor spoiler. There's a, here's a thing that goes away. I'll, I'll, I'll take this off screen and the spoiler goes away. Like right after they're done with the musical number and it shows just like sunny Southern California, 70 degrees, and then the thing just pops up winter. Like that's, oh man, that's just the best. But yeah, the story's all about Emma Stone's character, who's a barista who wants to be an actress, and Ryan Gosling's character, who is an out-of-work pianist who wants to start up a jazz club. And what makes this movie so great is it's just, it's so relatable for any, just anyone who likes art in general. I know that sounds super vague, but if you're into creative things, and you're into, really, you're into music, film, painting, I don't know, whatever you're into, this movie just really captures what it's like to chase after after a dream and what it's like to just keep getting rejected and keep getting rejected on the way to trying to make it make it all work out. And what I love about this is it's not the cliche like, oh man, I'm I'm a nobody, but I want to be a somebody. It's like, no, they're good at what they do. They just don't know how to make it work. And Emma Stone's side of the story, which you're kind of, we're, we're already kind of invested. I mean, we're into movies. We get the whole acting spiel. Like, even if you're not an aspiring actor or actress, you can relate to someone wanting to get into film. But Ryan Gosling's character wants to get into jazz. He wants to start his own jazz club. And if you've got an entire segment where are like, well, okay, but like, I don't like jazz. Like, what's... Most people don't like jazz, so what's the deal with jazz? Why should we care about jazz? And Ryan Gosling's character just breaks it down in a way that just makes it seem so interesting and so compelling. To, and then it also makes it seem like it's on the same level as filmmaking. Like, he's talking about conflict and talking about improvisation, everybody working in sync and everyone trying to work together. I'm like, that's that's what filmmaking is. That's really cool. So there's a scene in the middle of the movie. I know it might, this minor spoiler. I'm not even going to put the disclaimer up here because he'll just be like, oh, hey, here's a scene in the movie. I'm not giving away the ending. It's just a theme that's in the movie. Emma Stone's character is presenting Ryan Gosling with this screenplay that she's writing. It's a one actress show and she's like, oh well, I mean I'm not sure if anyone's gonna, gonna like this. It feels a little nostalgic. It feels a little like, I don't know, self too self-reflective. And Ryan Gosling's character says, yeah, no, screw it. People will care about what you care about. If you are passionate about this, people will take an interest in it and want to know why you're passionate about it. It's not the exact line, but just that's it's such a great theme and that's so true for this 
this movie. Like, because the creators of this movie care about old Hollywood and care about jazz and care about storytelling and care about these sorts of people and of creating this style and of just showing the struggle that creators go through to make their dream, to make their creations happen. Not even their dreams, but just like make their talents, have their talents cr make something and come to fruition. Because they are so passionate about this, it sucks you into the movie. And that's that's the point where I was like, okay, this is, all right, possible best movie of the year right here. Because I've noticed that lately there's a lot of ways in which you can find like themes within stories that are essentially the director kind of living out what the movie is in the big picture. Like Josh Taylor from The Inner Tube had this great perspective on uh, The Force Awakens, which was that The Force Awakens in a way was all about J.J. Abrams trying to find his place in the Star Wars universe and trying to make a film that could stand up on its own, but then also pay tribute to the past. Whether you like The Force Awakens or not, like, that's an interesting perspective. And then, like, in the, um, in my Rogue One video, I talked about how Rogue One is sort of an allegory for Gar for what Gareth Ed Edwards was doing. He's looking at this universe and saying, oh, man, this is so big. This is so much bigger than me. Like, how are we gonna make a mark on this? And in this movie, moving away from the Star Wars thing, we've got people who want to make something. They want, they have a very, they have a thing that they want to put out there that they don't know too many people will enjoy or too many people will care about. And they finally just came to terms with the fact that if they put their heart and soul into this and they care about it and they give this all they got, people will care about it. That's why people watch these stupid videos talking about movies and talking about like whatever is going on in the news because when people are passionate about something, people will watch them being passionate about it. When I watched Rush, that Formula One racing movie, I hope it's called Rush, I'm notorious for messing up titles with movies as you've seen so far. But when it comes to Rush, like, I don't care at all about Formula One racing, but that movie's awesome and it got me to care about it because someone else was passionate about it, because these characters are passionate about it. And it's, that's just so inspiring. How, and just at how true that is, that how people will care about something if you care about it, if you put forth the effort. Another great thing from this movie, just showing the journey, like all the hardship that takes to get where you want to be in life. Like right when you're about to give up, right when everything seems the worst, you're gonna get another shot, you're gonna get another opportunity, and how you react when you're just so beat down and tired and sick of being beat up by the world. The decision you make there is going to define what you do. The people who are successful and the people who get to where they want to be are the people who push through and keep pounding away even after they think they've got nothing left. Oh yeah, and amongst all that other stuff, we got some fun dialogue, got some cool dance numbers. It's just, it's a cool movie. So we've reached the point in the video where I keep talking, I'm just gonna spoil the whole thing for you, and that's not fair because you need to see this right now. Either in theaters or inevitably when it comes out on like pay-per-view the week before the Oscars because they're trying to make sure everybody sees everything. See this movie. You will not regret it. This is such an amazing film. I didn't love every second of it. I still think there's some cheesy stuff in there. I still think there's some stuff where I'm like rolling my eyes and like, oh, okay, yeah, sure, Whatever. But when it, when it hits and when it's trying to get a message across and when it's trying to give a character moment or trying to get you to fall in love with these characters, it is so successful. And it leaves off on kind of a bittersweet note. Um, I, again, not gonna spoil it for you, but it is very old Hollywood, specifically relating to a certain movie about World War II. You'll know what I'm talking about when you see the movie or after you see the movie and think about it for a while. Think about what movie this could possibly be similar, similar to with the ending. But anyway, that's all I've got to say about La La Land. Seriously, just what an awesome movie. It is absolutely a smoothie on a Sunday morning. Go drink that in. Go get some La La Land in your life. Anyway, have you guys seen it yet? Or are you going to see it now that you know it's it's not awful? Now that you know someone who hates musicals and hates everything this movie should have been loves this movie, like, what are you gonna do now? What movies do you think should win Oscars? I just did back-to-back -back, Why Don't You Love episodes on movies that I think should do really well at the Oscars. I can't remember if Deepwater Horizon got nominated for anything. It should have. Peter Berg should get something for at least one of the two movies he made this year. But anyway, let me know down below. Talk all about it. I'm gonna go take a shower so I don't look like the type of person that Meryl Streep is talking about. Love all you guys. And until next time, God bless and stay saucy.